And what you're doing whilst you're doing that is breaking down some of the barriers that people have to accessing support. And I know that's another thing that you kind of mentioned in your article about the importance of breaking down barriers to to access uh, yeah. in higher education and what that can do in terms of bridging those attainment gaps. Yeah, so I, th I think one of the... Um... And I'll I'll leave a I'll leave a hyperlink to an article um in in the kind of crib notes and in the description for the YouTube viewers, is that what we noticed during COVID was that this awarding gap, for whatever reason, and, and we've got some hypotheses that we'll talk about in a second, this awarding gap actually shrunk across the UK, um, which was quite considerable, quite statistically significant. And perhaps one of the reasons for that is because lots of individuals were learning remotely and because of that remote learning what it meant was that lots of students now suddenly find themselves on a level playing field students that probably have that class confidence so that they can kind of maybe um i don't want to use i'm going to use the word but i don't mean it in a negative way monopolize an academic's time they can ask lots of questions they can direct conversations that are to their interests suddenly that was eradicated you had lots of different ways of teaching rightly or wrongly lots of discussion boards online where students were posting daily or weekly comments to which an academic would type questions back you had more kind of intuitive things like some of the work that you and i were doing in terms of recording visual or auditory feedback so that students felt more entwined within that community um but what we see holistically across the uk is this awarding gap decreased some institutions got rid of their uh, exams in place of essays which again might reduce some of those barriers that people might feel anxious about they might not work as well in those um, exam settings and therefore everyone's doing an essay everyone might have more time and and time is actually a really important one we saw across the uk lots of um extenuating circumstances so some universities called them eecs some call them kind of prolonged extensions and because lots of students had more time to complete their essays that meant that those essays were being conducted to a much stronger degree and whether or not you agree that students should be given more time to complete assignments than what they currently have actually when you're trying to assess knowledge and going back to what we were talking about in our last podcast about transferable skills actually for me as a potential employer i would much rather know that a student has that capability has that knowledge and has those skills and that they can do that in 10 weeks versus they have similar levels but they can do it in eight weeks and they don't actually have to try as much as they did so what we did see is that these breaking down of barriers really efficient really practical and actually i think that institutions that have foregone all of this kind of online technology that they learned during covid even such as having some meetings or some personal tuition sessions that are online actually they might lose some of that benefit if they go back to a full on-campus model so for example students who perhaps come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds actually for them to come into university and maybe have to take a day off of a part-time job just to come into a tuition session which could be held online at a different time actually that's a big deal for them it's a it's a day or half a day's income and they might have to pay for a train or a bus which you know all of these costs creep in together so potentially in in, in quotes little things like that can have huge impacts on their degrees yeah a hundred percent i think some of those uh adjustments i guess that were made during covid um i think over time we're seeing them be kind of drawn back and walked back and I, i'm not convinced that that's the right decision to be honest in terms of uh mandated on campus classes and things like that i i can see the value in having on campus classes and i think that there are certain certain types of session where that works really well so seminars for example if you're if you're trying to get people to be interactive it's very difficult to do that online i personally um don't see that much value in big lectures being in person with half full lecture halls 
um, where it's a, a member of staff just talking for an hour or, or for an hour or two. Um, I don't see them much there being much value in that, to be honest. If, particularly when you think about how attainment can be impacted by lower levels of engagement. I think the point that you raised at the end there about if someone's coming in for one hour of a day and they're having to take time off work to do that, we know that the cost of living at the moment is mm. absolutely skyrocketing. You think about the cost of, of fuel to get in, if you think about the cost of public transport, think about the fact that actually there's lots of strikes in the UK at the moment in terms of public transport. We've seen it on uh, in different places that we teach and that students just can't get in at the moment a lot of the time because there are so many strikes related to the cost of living mm. um so yeah i think that these things are slowly being taken away and not necessarily for the better um like you say some of the the changes that were made in terms of making exams open book or turning exams into coursework makes perfect sense to me i've been quite outspoken in the past about the fact that i don't see there being much value in exams at all i can't remember the last time i did any task in exam conditions as anything other than a student um so yeah i don't see that being particularly uh problematic to keep some of those assessments that way 